Hey everyone, Shadow here, and welcome to another Marvel Contest of Champions video. So in this video, we're going to be taking a closer look at Invisible Woman. So first, let's take a look at her synergies. This first synergy is a very good synergy, and arguably the best synergy. Force Block. Other synergy members, block proficiency is increased by 5%, perfect block chance is increased by 10%, and if all the other champions in this synergy are present, so that means all four of the Fantastic Four are on your team, well-timed blocks inflict up to one 10% weakness debuff on the opponent for six seconds. Now, a little word about that right now. Well-timed block means that you parry. Most of the time, the parry results in a stun, unless they're stun immune. So you have six seconds after this well-timed block to have this 10% weakness debuff on the opponent. Why does that matter? Well, when we look at uh, a little bit more in depth, you're gonna see where that helps out Invisible Woman uh, quite a little bit, okay? Now, until death, we know that's Reed Richards. See, unfazed, you can see what that does there. They gain 10% of a bar of power, all right? Uh, this one here increases the duration of Fury, Prowess, Regeneration, Indestructible, and Limbo. And finally, Just Friends. Ooh, I hate that F word. Uh, everyone gains 5% health. All right, so let's take a look here. Now, she's not awakened, and I don't believe she needs to be awakened uh, to be pretty good. Uh, but let's look at my three-star here. That is her awakened ability. She turns invisible at the start of the fight, but it's not paused. She gains 50% chance to turn invisible whenever uh, she's knocked down. You know, these are nice to haves. Uh, whenever the opponent misses, the force field gains back, you know, a percentage of its starting value. So all of these things are nice to haves, but I don't believe she needs to be awakened. All right, let's uh, look at her abilities here. Now, these are her passives. When dodging backwards, Invisible Woman is not struck by attacks. That is nice, especially when the computer likes to pounce on you. Uh, when you dash back, very nice. 20% uh, chance that a block is a perfect block, reducing all damage to zero. This makes her pretty tanky. Physical resistance decreased by 683 there and for each debuff on the opponent invisible woman's attacks deal an additional four percent of the damage dealt as a burst of physical damage remember i mentioned in the synergy we would talk about it a little bit why it was so helpful well there you go so she'll parry with that synergy they'll have a weakness debuff because it's a debuff she gains four percent of the damage dealt Another thing to mention is in your masteries, you have the mastery called Resonate. Resonate also gives you a chance to place a weakness debuff on your opponent. So that can be very useful as well. She gains more damage. All right, there we have the best defense. That's her pre-fight ability. That is an ability that you can activate before the fight starts, okay? If her force field is active, Invisible Woman's hits have a plus attack rating, so she's going to hit harder thanks to this pre-fight ability, but it also drains the force field by 5%. That's important when we look a little bit later to see what she has to compensate uh, for that. All right, now here's her force field. Okay, she starts the fight with force field. Uh, the maximum strength is equal to to a certain amount of health and it scales with boosts and buffs. Let me say that again. It scales with boosts and buffs, all right? That means that the higher her health, the more powerful her force field. Okay, enough said. Uh, whenever Invisible Woman would take damage other than from a special three, the force field takes up to 90% of the damage instead. Again, very tanky. 
uh, physical and energy resistance are increased by 361. When the force field runs out, it goes into cooldown for 20 seconds, and then it'll reform back at full strength. If the force field doesn't reform for any reason, you know, reduced ability accuracy, something, it goes into cooldown for 10 seconds, and then it'll try again. All right, more on her invisibility. When she dodges an attack, she turns invisible. All right. Also, when the force field is depleted, she also uh, turns invisible. Uh, invisibility, invisibility lasts for two seconds, but starts paused if invisible woman is not bleeding. That is important. If you're fighting her, you want to fight with someone who can bleed her. That just sounds so inappropriate. But anyway, uh, so the fact that you might be running suicides and you have double edge, which causes a bleed, that's something you need to bear in mind. Okay. Um, but she's actually quite suicide friendly. While invisible, incoming attacks have a 100% chance to miss. Hello, ghost. Uh, as long as Invisible Woman is not blocking or dodging and critical rating is increased, Invisible Woman uh, Invisibility is unpaused when Invisible, invisible Woman, I don't know why I have a hard time saying it, uh, Invisible Woman blocks an attack, an opponent misses, or an opponent hits Invisible Woman. This is going to play a very large part in how you play her. And we'll talk about that later during the gameplay. When invisibility expires, it goes into cooldown for 10 seconds. Okay, now this vulnerability debuff, this, along with what we just read, are going to be keys to her damage. Whenever invisible, uh, invisible woman, I was about to say invisibility, whenever invisible woman would turn invisible, she places a vulnerability debuff on the opponent to a maximum of 50 vulnerabilities. All right, um, just so you know, the more... Uh, of these vulnerability debuffs that are on the opponent, the more damage she's going to deal. Why? Do you recall earlier? 4% per debuff. Okay. When attacking a vulnerable opponent, increase critical damage rating uh, by 33 and decrease their block proficiency by 10%. So not only is she going to be hitting harder, but she's also going to be Critting harder. Nice. All vulnerability debuffs are, um, are purified when invisibility expires. Okay, remember that. Whenever a vulnerability debuff is purified, invisibility expires immediately. Okay, getting down to the end here, folks. If the force field is active, 65% chance to exhaust the opponent, decreasing critical damage rating, uh, for ten, uh, 5 seconds. The opponent's power gain effects are also reduced by 25% for each exhaustion debuff on them. So she has a little bit of uh, power control as well. And now, let's take a look at her specials and, and try to keep in mind, as you read the specials, her other abilities. So special 1, on the last attack, if the force field is active, add a flat 25% to its current strength. Why is that important? Remember what the pre-flight uh, uh, pre-fight ability does. She hits harder, but at the expense of draining her force field more. Well, with a special one, you add to the strength of the force field. So, a little compensation. On the last hit, if the force field is on cooldown, 50% chance for it to be restored at 50% health. Got that. So even if it's not 20 seconds and it was on cooldown for 20 seconds, you know, sometimes it goes on cooldown for 10, you can have a 50% chance to instantly get your force field back, but it'll be at half strength. Special attack two, the first attack of this, uh, first hit of this attack uh, grants a fury for nine seconds, increasing your attack rating uh, scaling with the current force field strength. 
then the force field is drained. So the stronger your force field, the more damage this special two attack is going to do. All right. If this attack is blocked, Invisible Woman has a 50% chance to turn invisible, which is quite nice. Now, Special Attack 3, if the force field is active, add a flat 100% to the force field's current strength. Nice. If the force field is on cooldown, it is instead restored at 100% health, uh, strength. Uh, pause invisibility on Invisible Woman. It cannot unpause for six seconds. All right, so that is her abilities. It's a lot, uh, but we will talk about what you want to do to get the most damage out of her uh, when we do the gameplay. So let's head on over to Realm of Legends and fight Winter Soldier. Okay, so here we are heading into Realm of Legends. You can see that I went in with no synergies active, no other team uh, mates here. So first thing first, you want to remember to activate her pre-fight ability. As you see, I did just there. That gives her a lot more attack. Now, the main strategy in maintaining high damage, the more vulnerability debuffs you have on your opponent, the more damage you're going to do. When she's invisible, she does a lot more damage. So what you're gonna see me do here, uh, once I build up to it a little bit, is I'm going to try to maintain that invisibility for as long as possible and stack up those vulnerability debuffs. That is what you want to do. Look at the damage and watch how it ramps up. Now, it is a little frustrating because in order to maintain this, you can't get hit. You can't take a blocked hit. Nothing like that. Any attack on you while you're in, uh, invisible is going to result in the invisibility going on cooldown and all of the vulnerability debuffs being purified. So your damage will go down. It's sort of like a Star-Lord, um, but in my opinion, a little worse because with Star-Lord, you could at least block your way through and he has some good block proficiency. All right, so you see here, I'm building it up, but I can't get touched at all. So a lot of intercepting, a lot of baiting out specials and baiting out heavies is what you need to do in order to ramp that damage up. So you see we're up to 25 and you can see the damage. Look at that, that's a 13K crit. So she can put out quite a bit of damage, but it takes some work. Just look at those crits, all right? And she's at 20, I did a little intercept there, but it's always dangerous. Now, you will, win the intercept thanks to that inv uh, invisibility. But if you lose the intercept or where you would lose the intercept, you'll lose your in invisibility. All right, so you see there, I'm up to 37 vulnerability. Look at his health and look at her health. She is quite tanky. Remember I said that she is very good with suicides? Well, you're seeing here, she is very good with suicides. She takes reduced damage. All right, look at that. I'm up to 45, 46, 47. And I don't really like Winter Soldier because he doesn't always act right. Now see right there, I tried to evade and I got hit on my block. Bye bye, all those vulnerability uh, debuffs and I'm back to zero. Um, as far as my damage goes, I'm back to ground zero. All increased damage is gone. Okay, so that's pretty much what you want to do. Uh, I didn't get up to 50, but hopefully you can see what you need to do when you're playing with Invisible Woman. Now, this is, of course, a stacked opponent, and she has class disadvantage here. And yet, she's still doing well. And let me bring your attention to her health. Look at her health. You may notice that her health is actually higher than it was previously when I started mentioning how tanky she was. So yes, suicides are quite good with her. 
All right, so we're down to the end of the fight. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Uh, now, after this, we're going to talk a little bit about her pros and her cons. So stay tuned for that. Here's my assessment of Invisible Woman. On the left, we have the pros that I see. On the right, we have the cons. So her pros, she has good damage. She's very tanky. And her high block proficiency, her force field, the invisibility, her increased block chance, all of these contribute to her tankiness. So she can take a lot of damage and she actually heals a little bit from suicides. She has great animations. Yes, she is very sexy. That is why she's over there to the right there. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, she's very suicide friendly. In fact, she thrives even on suicides. Uh, she's a good defender on the right nodes. And she has good prestige, 10,508 uh, when she's a 565 at max sig. Her cons, she does require some ramp up. Now, anytime a champion requires ramp up, just know that they're going to get that in my con column because I am not a fan of ramp up champions. Like Aegon, he's great, he's awesome, but I don't like him because he's a ramp up champion. Uh, and her high damage is difficult to maintain. So let me explain a little bit about what I mean there. So you saw in the gameplay that in order to maintain high damage, you need to avoid getting touched. So you cannot get hit on your block. Obviously, you can't get hit, but you can't even take blocked hits. And when you're invisible, you cannot even have them miss. So if you take the hit on your um, while you're invisible, they're going to miss, but that's also going to purify all of those vulnerability uh, debuffs and your damage goes back down to normal. So in order to play her with the highest damage potential, you need to play a particular style that not a lot of people find uh, easy to do. So that's why that's one of the cons. Now, you may be one of those people that can intercept like a god. And this will be great for you. This uh, plays into your strengths. But for many of us, intercepting is a more risky move. And the fact that you need to intercept, you'll need to basically play her similarly to how you would play a stun immune. The reason I say similarly is because with a stun immune, you may take blocked hits in order to bait out a heavy. But with her, you can't do that if you want to maintain that damage. So while you're invisible, maintaining that invisibility is the key to having high damage. And in order to do that, you've got to avoid contact. You need to keep dexing everything. You may need to hit into their block to push them to a special and then evade their specials. If you're going up against someone that you cannot avoid some of their damage, like say Bishop or War Machine, then pushing them to a special, you're gonna take some sort of, uh, not damage, but you're gonna get hit somehow. So not a great matchup when you can't avoid getting touched in some way. All right, but that is my assessment. She is a good champion. I like her. She has nice utility. Um, that invisibility, if you're not just trying to maintain high damage, if you're just needing her for her survivability, uh, she is great. Uh, she's not going to change your account if you have some of the more well-known, you know, champions like Ghost or Corvus you know, Namor, Omega Red, you know, some of those, no, she's not going to take their place and she's not going to surpass them, but she has her place. So she's really good. I think she is well worth ranking up to four or five. So that's going to do it, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Click like, subscribe, leave a comment.
Let me know what you thought about this video. Hopefully you learned something. Let me know. And you all have a blessed day.